Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Kuri. I'm one of the consultants at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. And today I want to introduce two experts in the field of endometriosis and assisted conception. This is Andreas, and Andreas worked in London. He holds, you know, puts on three hats. He is an expert in ultrasound scanning. He is an expert in IVF, and he is practices very advanced endometriosis and other laparoscopic surgeries. And as you know, Sachin Kulkarni, who works in India, who has interests in IVF and runs a very big IVF unit, but has a huge interest in developing research in polycystic ovaries, especially the lean PCO, on which he has done a research which has concluded of 10 years. And today's our, our discussion is focusing on endometriosis. And I want to ask both of you two scenarios that come up. A young woman, 25, 26 year old, comes to your clinic with pelvic pain. The finding is a five centimeter endometrioma. What would be your approach? You wearing two hats and you coming up as an assistant consultant specialist. How would you deal with this case? Well, first of all, it's a nice example. It's a very common example. And let's keep things simple. Um, this woman has got a pain. She's young and she wants to get pregnant. So it's important to know whether she has tried to get pregnant naturally, for how long, and whether there's any other factor contributed to the infertility. Because in our minds and in patient minds, always endometriosis means surgery, which is not always the case. So a five centimeter endometrioma in a woman with pain who has tried to get pregnant, she has failed, then surgery comes into discussion. And yeah. what do you think? Uh, yeah, definitely. I would think of doing a surgery, taking care of the endometrioma by an expert laparoscopic surgeon like him. But before surgery, I think the woman and the couple in general needs to be counseled in detail. First is to know the ovarian reserve parameters as they exist today, because as we understand very clearly that endometriosis predisposes, especially an endometrioma predisposes for a gradual decrease in the AMH levels, even if you don't touch them. So definitely we need to remove it so that, and also know the basal AMH and the ovarian reserve of this particular lady. Then uh, once I know the ovarian reserve, parameters, I would definitely request a surgery by him and would like to know how he will help me come out of the endometrioma plus do your maximum preserving the ovarian reserve to the lady because doing endometrioma surgeries are notorious affecting the ovarian reserve. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And um, as we know, we should, and that's what I do in my practice, I always do an AMH before surgery. On one hand, it's going to guide you whether you undertake surgery or not, but it's importantly, once you have confirmed that you're going to go forward with surgery, you need to know the AMH preoperatively and the AMH postoperatively. Post and I elaborate a little bit more than this. It's not only a legal answer, because a woman can come to you and say, the other surgeon uh, gave me infertility because of surgery. But actually, if you've done an AMH before surgery and you do an AMH after surgery, then you can prove in a way that your surgery was good. Um, now, it's important when you proceed with that surgery to, um, to be as meticulous as possible. So you need to drain the fluid in the endometrioma and then very slowly, small movements, you need to peel off the cyst wall millimeter by millimeter, yeah. preserving as much of your tissue as possible. And then there are certain areas where the cyst wall is very stuck, is adhering badly. And there you say, okay, will I cauterize? Will I cut off this piece? And because you need the cyst wall to come out, preferably I will cut it off a little bit and I don't want to leave any cyst wall behind. Once the endometrioma is peeled off, clearly you've got bleeding points. Yeah. And then you proceed with, as we call it, targeted hemostasis. A bit of wash, a bit of buzzing, a bit of wash, a bit of buzzing, so you minimize the distraction to the ovarian tissue. And almost always, I prefer to suture the ovary for yeah. two reasons. First of all, I minimize the diathermy and therefore the distraction based on that. And secondly, I want the ovary to become as an ovary again together rather than become stuck to an organ as a result of the raw area. 
I think that, that that's such a fantastic suggestion that you must suture the ovary, preferably by an internal suturing, if the suture is not exposed mm -hmm. to the exterior, so that you can avoid a bit of adhesions. And most importantly, minimizing the diathermy to its lowest level, so that you can preserve the ovarian tissue as much as possible mm -hmm. to have a better fertility outcome further. Uh, uh, Anil, in your practice, when you have these patients coming back to you after the surgery, uh, do you go for any medical therapy before you take them off for IVF or you just straightway take them off for IVF? See, in the ideal world, uh, where if you're given a choice, then the evidence lies that if you wait for a period of time post-surgery, there is a small possibility of endometriosis coming back. Now, where we are at a fix is that we know that if you operate on endometrioma, spontaneous pregnancy rates are better. Now, if this couple is trying for a long time, you have two options there. One is you can say, well, do you want to try for three more months for a pregnancy, or do you want to go in for IVF? A proactive therapy. Now, in the past, we have followed this old protocol in which we downregulate for three months, do prolonged downregulation, yeah. and then perform assisted conception. The thinking was based on that by doing prolonged downregulation, you improve oocyte quality and you also treat the endometrium. And the slogan came out that endometriosis and endometrium go hand in hand. The recent paper coming up from Valencia basically looked at a review and said, you can't change oocyte quality. And in fact, giving three months of analog did not really change the endometrium. So at present, my practice is a bit different. I do not downregulate because one we know that three months of downregulation shuts down the ovary and causes decline in antral follicle count and I prefer doing an antagonist protocol collecting eggs creating embryos freezing blastocysts and then addressing the endometrium if need be and then uh, before vitrification thaw cycle would you be doing an ultra long down regulation now because uh, she was having endometriosis and probably a small amount of coexisting even adenomyosis could be there or you just want to get the inflammation in the pelvis down before you plan your embryo transfer in frozen embryo. Uh, I don't at present. Or you just go ahead and... Uh, I use it. gonapeptil which is a long acting uh, analog which works for five weeks and I give a single shot <coughs> and then see them in a few weeks, about four weeks time to start the estrogen preparation. There are times in which there is associated adenomyosis, and uh, my general rule is that if the uterine size is about eight centimeter, it's not a fixed plan, yeah. I aim to give them three courses of long acting to reduce the size of the uterus, thus treating the adenomyosis uh, to a certain extent and treating the endometriosis. So I think we should consider this as a norm, that something which is beyond five centimeter, we would be doing an AMH surgery then planning an antagonist cycle and vitrifying the embryos and then going for down regulation with one and then doing a frozen embryo for cycle. Um, only because there's a lot of people watching this video and especially not as experienced doctors, I want to get away from fixating or fixing a number five centimeters. And I say that yeah. because a lot of people come to me from other doctors who they say, it's 4.5 centimeter, I shouldn't have surgery. Or it's 5.2 centimeters okay. and I should have surgery. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. let's not fix the number and let's take the case as a whole, take into consideration the other infertility factors because a woman might require surgery even in two centimeters endometrioma. Uh, and again, I will do an AMH because I want to know what the potential is there before embarking on surgery. And again, for the reasons I explained before, after surgery, I would have proved my surgery was the right way. Um, in addition to that, for the junior uh, doctors, again, is that um, we have to be very, very careful who operates. It's, it's crucial. So if there is a fertility doctor who undertakes surgeries, then fine, as long as you know how to do. But if not, instead of sacrificing ovarian tissue, you better of liaise with an endoscopic surgeon, who, again, we have to select very carefully because we talk about fertility enhancing yeah. and not fertility suppressing surgery that a gynecologist, for example, would do. Yeah, such a vital point that is, definitely. And definitely, uh, suppose you get cases where the endometrium of a smaller size and 
uh, the patient is not having severe pain symptoms. Mm -hmm. It is just an incidental finding on the course of investigation of infertility and she's due to go for her IVF cycle with an AMH of less than one nanogram mm -hmm. per ml. Would you then advise a surgery before she plans the cycle or we should just her? No, actually for the past four years being on the private practice and seeing a lot of these patients, I find myself doing less and less surgery prior to IVF. Okay. Because once you do surgery, you can't go back. Yeah. If you do an IVF and it doesn't respond, you can go to surgery. Yeah. So I kind of do more and more of IVF, see my response. If let's say I have five blastocysts, I don't care about endometriosis, I put an embryo back, it might work. She come to me to give her a baby. If I have one embryo, I might not go for surgery. I do more IVF, I get more embryos. And then prior to frozen cycle, I consider surgery as long as I have banked my embryos. And I've got security to say I've done everything I could and now it's the time for surgery. So good that we, we, we can conclude that we need uh, an excellent fertility conserving endoscopic surgeon for yeah. the betterment of endometriosis. And uh, an IVF consultant and a combination of this would definitely go for any patient of endometriosis in the future. Okay, thank you.